Hello and welcome to, I think it's part three now, of this video restoration series on this Philips Valve Radio. This would be about my seventh or eighth take I've done in regards to getting this video underway. I don't know how many of you other guys sort of start the video and then get sort of about a minute in it and realize, oh, no, 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 this is not going away. I want, then, 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 then stop it and start again. Well, this would be, this. I've done this several times this evening, so <laughs> I'm sure you, sure others do it. And um, I just get really frustrated. So, ah, you know, that, uh, oh, well, um, so hopefully this time the video lasts more than a minute and we I actually get through it without stopping halfway through. So, here we are again with this thing on the bench. Um, managed to make a fair bit of headway on it this weekend. It's actually getting very, very close to being done. The radio is not back in there because I, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting to get a main safety cap to put on on the on the chassis. Um, it's pretty much done. I've spent most of the weekend actually cleaning everything up. Um, most of it was spent on the cabinet. Um, I've, um, polish the cabinet up to as best as possible it's looking a hell of, a hell of a lot better than what it was um it was extremely dull like very very dull i, I don't know how many times i don't know how many passes i did on the cabinet but um yeah it could probably be a bit better um i might have have, have another crack at it again at some other point um but uh, yeah overall i'm actually pretty happy with it um clean up all around here clean the Clean the speaker grill, and all look, all looking, looking, looking a lot, lot nicer and a lot cleaner. Um, the badge was a badge was a bit of a tricky, tricky thing. When I um, when I took the badge off, it's got two little. Um, are you, are you going to focus, phone, or are you going to be a pain? Oh, she's focused. Um, yeah, no, the, it's got two little, little, um, two little bloody locating lugs, and of course, one of them broke off when I went to take it off. So it's one side, one side is okay. I've put a bit of epoxy on it to hold it, and the other and the other side is actually just there's a little wee bit sticking off. So I've just actually just put put some epoxy in there and glued it and put pressure on down on it, and um, yeah, it's fine. It's pretty much just it's as good as it's as good as it's going to be. Um, so yeah, um, and um, I've cleaned the inside of the cabinet. I've got all there's all dust and muck. And crud it all down there. I've cleaned all that up, and um, the two pieces of felt were coming away, so I've glued those back. Um, the rest of it's all pretty clean and on the inside anyway, so I need to worry about that. And I have also cleaned up the grill itself with the escutcheon. The grill that, that sits in there, like so. This is a, this has actually come up really nicely. Um, and I was actually able to swap those Phillips badges off over, sorry, over. Um, you might remember the other one that I had here with the broken thing. Um, had, had a nice badge. I actually managed to flick it off and I'm actually glued that one back on. I'm actually really pleased that that actually, that actually just popped off. And as you can see, I thought, oh, what, what, what'll happen if I, um, if I use some window cleaner on the on the on the uh, on the on the on the on the um, screen on the printing side of the uh, dial, and you pretty much took took this took took all the lettering and all the all the screen printing pretty much took it right off. So yeah, that's why I'm very very reluctant to even. I'm not even going to attempt to clean the back side of this of that because all the lettering's there. I don't. I'm not even going to touch it with anything with any solvent. There's a little, there's a little wee street mark there, it's like, like a little wee run from something down there. I think, well, do I disturb that or do I just leave it? Because if I, I'm just so paranoid that if I touch it with anything, it's going to take the um, it's going to take all the all the lettering off. So I think I will just leave it, um, and just not worry too much about it, to be honest. So. But yeah, no, it's actually going to look pretty nice when that's back in. Um, the only reason the um. The only reason the uh, chassis is not back in here is because I'm waiting on a. Um, I've still yet to fit a, a um, AC main safety cap to the chassis, so it's the last thing I've got to do to this. Uh, we'll move that away, and it is absolutely freezing cold in here in the workshop tonight. It's um, we've had some we've had a very very cold past few days here, 
and um, it would must be only about probably seven or eight degrees in here, possibly. Um, I haven't got the heater running because it makes so much noise. So I'd rather freeze <laughs> and be able to hear, hear myself think and not have this constant roaring noise in the background, which, you know, as you know, the old these cameras on these blooming phones are pretty pretty sensitive, picking up all sorts of background noise. So just some cause of annoyance when I when I play it back. Um, so what I've done to this? Well, uh, I've changed, I've pretty much recapped it. Um, here's all the dead bits here, all these, and all and virtually all these caps on my bridge, you know, all of them are pretty much leaky. Like the leakage, you know, you, you, you get up to about you get up to about 100 volts or even 50 volts, and the eye would close. So these caps have not stood the test of time. I suggest if you see that if you've got any any Phillips radios, that these are they've got these in, change them. Um, there's the badge off the uh, replacement off the um, donor dial. I'll just keep that for the for the sake of it. And um, yeah, all the valves, apart from the output valve, actually tested fine, and they're all the original ones. This one measured low, and there was a there was an element short in there as well. Um, it, it, the the radio still ran fine with it. It just took it just the volume wasn't as the, the volume level wasn't as good, and it took a lot longer for the actual audio to come through. I could have left it in there; it would have been fine. But um, no, I. I said out of that um, out of that donor chassis were a whole bunch of valves, and um, I tested the replacement UL84, and it read it came out really good on the meat on the tester, so I fitted that, and yet yeah, goes a hell of a lot better with that valve in it. Now, just a side issue. Someone here might know. Apparently, in New Zealand, we got a whole lot of these valves by the manufacturer of Trigon. Now, I heard. From somebody, come on, focus, you stupid blasted thing. Here we go. I was told from someone that these are actually Russian valves, or made, yeah, or, or you know, or made Russian Czechoslovakian. Um, not sure whether that, that is true, but um, someone, one of you uh, YouTube members out there may know. Um, I've noticed the construction of these valves. I've got lots. They used uh, TV, uh, a lot of TV valves too, were made under the brand Trigon. And um, I also heard someone else, also heard, also heard somebody else say that these valves are crap as well. So how much truth is in that? I don't know. But um, yes, yeah, so uh, just a bit of useless, useless information about these valves. So UL41, 45B5, obviously that's the... Um, American equivalent to that. But yeah, if anyone knows about the Trigon brand or what the origin of it is, let me know. So I'll put that back in. Yeah, so as you can see, there's new capacitors there. And I'll just turn the chassis over, make sure it's make sure it's the very X turned down and we're turned off so I don't get give myself a wallop. These things being Live chassis, of course, are horrid at the best of times. Um, uh, here, we are, here we are under here. We go under here. So these, those two Phillips caps there, they are they are their role on the circuit are basically just um, coupling to ground. One from the, one from the antenna, and one I think just passes audio. And uh, I'm just going to leave them in there. They're, they're fine. They're totally fine. They don't. They they should check okay. So I'm just going to leave them in there. Um, I've replaced what parts need to be changed, um, and the main filter um, cap was was reading was reading a, a bit low. So I've just put a couple of I've just used the tech strip and put a couple of um, caps that of old old TVs on there. Um, when it comes to restoring my old stuff, I'm not that fussed. I I, I will I have used second hand parts. In fact, most of the parts in there are all, most of the replacing caps are all, all new old stock or second hand. Um, because it's me, and you know, I'm 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 quite happy happy to use what 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 bits I've got. When it comes to customers' stuff, though, brand new parts don't don't use second hand bits in there at all. It's just not worth the risk. But um, yeah, my own my own my own radio. Repairing restorations instead of a, you know, I take my time and sort of, you know, I don't, don't, just don't rush through it, just, just plot away as I go. So, yep, 
it's in there, it's safe, it'll work, it'll do the job, so and it's totally fine by me. I'm quite happy with that. Now, the dial was a bit interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> the dial was eh, interesting, to say the least. Um, some twat, when they had restrung it, a member had actually had, had, had fishing line, when you turned the doll that way, the pointer went the other way. So they'd done it. They'd somehow done it back to front. Luckily, on the donor chassis, it was right. So all I've done is I've actually taken the whole dial string arrangement of the donor chassis and put it on here. And uh, yeah, so when you, so basically it turns the right way now, which I'm pretty certain it wasn't before. And of course, the the, the, the fishing line had all stretched, and so it, it was it wasn't it wasn't gripping properly either. So I've still got to oil that up. It still feels a bit. It still feels a bit stiff when I turn it, so I've got to oil that back up. We'll just lube all that mechanism up, up a bit. This thing, there's still a couple, of, a couple of little things still not yet. And I changed the, um, changed this backing plate too from the other one. The original had a bit of rust and it wasn't as nice looking, so I changed it over. Um, and I clean these knobs up as best I can. But it looks like somebody has actually looks like someone's. The knobs have gone all quite dull, and I don't know. It looks like someone's almost like it looks like someone's actually taken some sandpaper or like a some kind of abrasive. Yeah, looks like they've sanded sanded them up at some stage, or just like runs obviously to clean them. Because I actually noticed on the on the on the on the um, on the on the on the on the, on the dial, I noticed on this here. There's actually some there's actually some some scoring. You can just there, there. See around the shortwave one. You can just see some like some some scat some scow marks, some scratch some 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 horizontal scratches. So um, yeah, maybe someone had taken like a some kind of abrasive to the maybe with knobs of duty. So I thought they'd get a bit of sandpaper or something to clean them up or something, some kind of abrasive anyway. But um, yeah, I looked at getting these knobs off, but um, seriously, no. I think trying to get them off would be a pain. They'd probably all crack and break. As it turns, as the um, broadcast one did actually crack when I was cleaning it, and I just glued it all back um, just to make it so that it basically works. I mean, the other, the other knobs on the donor chassis are actually in better condition. They're a lot cleaner, hell of a lot cleaner, as you can see. Then they're not all sort of pitted and marked and crack looking. But um, nope, I am not going to worry about that. These. I've cleaned them up, they look a lot better than what they did, and it looks very presentable as far as I'm concerned. Um, and yeah, they're not flying off or doing anything silly that they shouldn't be. Um, so yeah, um, the chassis is all nice and clean. I've cleaned it as best I can. Um, cleaned all the valves up and yeah, I'm not into really, you know, I could I could, you know, clean the whole chassis, but now nah, I'm not gonna bother. It's, it's clean. I was very, very careful not to disturb all the trimmers when I was in there. I've just been using Q-tips and going around. As I said, the radio's not perfect. I don't expect it to be perfect. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much happy with that. Right, so I'll now fire it up. I've only got a few, a few more minutes left before the memory on my camera, on my phone runs out. So I'll, uh, I'll just bring the variant back up. And we will go. So. Bring that forward. I will do a final video when it's all back in the cabinet. You know, pretty, pretty much be part four, and that should be the conclusion and end of the project. Then I can then I, then I can get get back to some cantankerous old pie televisions. Also finding finding the right dialogues too was a mission as well. Getting I actually found some original Phillips ones, which was which was a bonus. Point a finger at Australia when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. She's copying it, and did the Prime Minister offend Australia? Well, she barked at Australia. News, opinion, debate. It's Heather Duplessy Allen Drive back Monday from. Sounds Paul. really good too. Sports Sports sounds really Sports nice. ZB. News Talk ZB uh, with Tim Beveridge. Gay, hello. Yay! 
Of course, it's been late at night, you know, picking up a lot of stations. Just uh, coming. It's a real problem here. We got Bronx Talk Radio, and guess what? We're starting with the freaking Yankees. Bye. 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 Teach me how to do it. I am warming. The chapter of an old leaf. Responsible for some of the practical end of this. You're doing the bit at the School of Government. What's in the program? The uh, delivery of hard times into our lives. But I <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I really need to lube that uh, doll. Really, really, really need to lube, lube that cheating drive mechanism. It's sort of feeling quite stiff in places. Come on, as a special guest. Oh, you could, but I mean, mm. mind you, I don't discriminate whether I just if I'm first there, I always open the door anyway. So. Well, that's right, I yeah, do no, too. Sounds really, really nice, this does. The young ones will drop it in. Um, I imagine shortwave will probably be working too. You see, sir, when I look at the ace in my deck of... 